everyone. Welcome back to IntegralCalc.com. We're going to be doing a trigonometric substitution problem today. This one was actually submitted by uh, someone on the website. And the problem that we're going to be doing today is the integral of dx over x squared times the square root of x squared minus 16. And this integral has defined limits that give us a range to evaluate the integral on uh, from 4 to 8. So the first thing that we want to do with trigonometric substitutions is determine which um, substitution we're going to use. So the first thing we want to look at is what we have under the radical or the square root sign here, x squared minus 16. We're looking first and foremost to see whether or not x is the first term or the second term. Um, and whether or not, secondly, we have a plus or a minus sign, because that will determine what kind of substitution we perform. So in our case, um, the x is first, and we have a minus sign. So it looks like the form uh, u squared minus a squared. And if you are taking calculus um, and you're you're studying trigonometric substitutions, you're probably going to have in your um, chapter section or in the back of your book somewhere a table of these different identities. And some of them are, you know, the different ones would be like a squared minus u squared or um, a squared plus u squared. So different things like that. And it'll tell you, um, based on which one you have, what um, substitution you need to do and which identity you need to use. So ours in this case is um, u squared, which u representing x, and then a squared, um, a represents a constant. So ours is u squared minus a squared. The first thing that we need to do is turn this x squared minus 16 into this exact form, u squared minus a squared, so that we don't get confused here. Um, so we have um, you can see this here, x squared, right? And then this um, 4 squared is 16. So we can rewrite this as 4 squared, right? So we've rewritten this x squared minus 16 in this form here, which it, you can see exactly uh, resembles this u squared minus a squared. So from this, we determine, right, if we draw arrows here, that u equals x and a equals 4 uh, using this, this substitution. So going along with this uh, substitution here are two components. The first is, um, and, and the, the way that it's usually written in, in um, textbooks, at least in my experience, is if your um, radical is in this form, then substitute uh, u equals a secant or secant theta um, and use the identity secant squared, sorry, I forgot the c, secant squared theta minus 1 equals tangent squared theta. So these two components go along with this u squared minus a squared. And remember we wrote down before, you know, a squared minus u squared, a squared plus u squared. Depending on which form your, um, the, the value under your square root is in, will change these two values here. So that's something you need to look up. But since ours is in this form, these are the two things that we're going to be using. So you can see here, um, we found our u and our a, and we have u and a values to plug in for here. So this u equals um, a secant theta is going to be the same thing as um, x equals 4 secant theta, plugging in x for u and 4 for a. So uh, x, time, uh, x equals 4 secant theta. So now that we've done that, um, one thing that we need to go ahead and do before we move on with the problem, and this is something that you may not encounter 
uh, taking you know a calculus 2 class they might make these all perfect for you but you should check nonetheless when you uh, write this um, this identity out here its actual value um, is in absolute value brackets here it's x equals 4 times the absolute value of secant theta um, and you can usually just drop those and have it just be secant theta but you do have to make sure and the way that you do that is um, first by changing uh, the bounds on the integral here so our integral they've asked us to evaluate on 4 to 8 um, these bounds 4 to 8 apply when we're looking at um, x as our variable but you can see here we're going to end up converting uh, all of these x's to thetas so we need to find out which bounds apply when we're using theta and the way that we do that is actually fairly simple it's by setting these bounds equal to x so we would start with 4 and we'd set um, we'd set 4 equal to um, x for secant theta um, and then we solve and so the way that we do that is to divide both sides by 4 first of all so we would get 1 equals secant theta and then um, to solve this we actually need the unit circle and the unit circle is something that uh, you should be familiar with from trigonometry you probably don't have it memorized um, but it looks like this it's obviously a circle and the unit circle uh, just as a, a crash course has various points on it so each uh, quadrant is divided up into one two three four sections um, and each of these um, points each of these lines here represents a point so this point for example is at um, this point right here um, this is an XY graph right like this is the Y X axis and the X axis here so this point here is um, 1 0 and let me just get rid of these this X and Y but that's the point 1 0 where X equals 1 and Y equals 0 um, the point up here then would obviously be 0 1 this would be uh, negative 1 0 uh, and this would be um, uh, 0 negative 1 so anyway so this is the unit circle and um, we need to use this to evaluate this um, identity here so each point uh, on this unit circle is represented um, by cosine theta sine of theta um, so this point 1 0 here is um, where cosine theta equals 1 and where sine theta equals 0. This point is where cosine theta equals 0 and sine theta equals 1, etc. So, and then each, um, each point along here also has a corresponding value. So this, um, the value here for this point is 0 um, and we're actually going to be looking at this point right here. The coordinate is um, one half, these are the two that we're going to need. I've done this problem ahead of time, so I know that it's these two, but if you had a unit circle to reference, you would be able to see these. I just didn't want to have to write the whole thing out, but this is pi over 3 here. So these are the two points we're going to need to look at. 